Hey everyone, welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating, uh, or rather continuing where I left off and just giving you a basic example of what your first point light in your ray handler uh, with your Box 3D World will look like. So this isn't going to be a specific demonstration of the point light. This is more so just observing what the Box 2D lights can do and how they work and uh, what they look like, just so you know if you want to put them in your game. Um, so as you can kind of see here, I added a few more box bodies into my world to create some walls that my player can move around in, and uh, we'll see some sort of blocking on our lights and observe how the ray handler works um, along with a lot of the ray casting. So if you'll also notice down here in the update method, I added a uh, method call to set combined matrix to the ray handler just like I do with the batch and I probably should have had that in the previous video however because we haven't really added any lights there were, and it was just using ambient lighting um, there wasn't really any scaling that we needed to observe so uh, I do this camera combine dot copy dot scale ppm now do know every time you use this dot copy method it is creating or allocating space for a second vector two object every time it runs to the update. So this isn't very efficient for um, like once your game starts getting a little larger, but just because this is a demonstration, this is a kind of my cheap way to do this. So um, I'll probably mention somewhere sometime how to go around this, but for the most part, just to see or mess around with things, you can use that. But do note that can be a bottlenecking or a performance uh, affecting call. So let's uh, jump right into getting our first light. So we're going to be using the point light in this demonstration. Uh, that's just called point light. And we'll just call that my light. And we'll jump down here after the ray handler initialization. and we'll be calling my light equals new point light and you're going to want to pass it the ray handler you're also going to want to uh, give it the number of rays that it will shoot out in every direction in a circular type of uh, shape and um, normally I'd say to have around anywhere between 20 to 200 is about where things are most efficient um, do note the higher that gets the more calculations that will be processed because of all those ray projections uh, and I'll I'll kind of show you what I mean by that so for now we're just going to set it to a hundred um, you can set it to higher but I I personally don't recommend it as it's a little bit overkill uh, then you're going to want to set a color and that's using the uh, bad logic DDX graphics color class by the way and so after that, then you set how long or well, how far out the length of the light uh, will be projected. So do note because this is going into a box city world, we are working in meters and not pixels. So if we do want to work in pixels, we do 32 divided by ppm, which is our standard. Um, and then you have the x and y. So this would be one meter out or 32 pixels out. And that's all you really have to do to get your first light into your world because you pass the ray handler, it does all the initialization for you and adds it to your ray handler to handle any lights that are added. So let's run it real quick and see what we get. I also set the ambient light to 0.5 just to get a darker light. So you'll kind of notice uh, not too much going on here. There's some kind of effect that you can barely 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 see um, however there's not really much going on other but we do see that light in the center so let's kind of tweak it a little bit um, how about we set this to I guess just because we're working in meters let's just set that to, this to six meters and you know what I probably shouldn't have set that to black I'm realizing now um, set that to white and we'll try one more time and see what we get so Okay, much brighter light, and now you can see as I move my player body around, it's uh, the light is being affected by the position of my box. 
And you'll notice that on my player, there's a lot of bleeding of that light. So the closer I get to the light, the more it bleeds into my object. And some games that's nice to have where it's uh, kind of overlapping on you, but in other games, you want it to just be like, you don't want any bleeding into it. And there's a pretty quick fix for that, but you'll have to do this for every light. Um, and it's just a simple method call. So set softness length. And we're just going to set that to zero. Again, some games you might not want to set it to zero. You might want some bleeding just for uh, the look and feel of the light. But for other demonstrations, you want it to be sharp. So now you see there's minimal bleeding amount. Um, it's a little bit smoother, more uh, sudden that the light will be stopped by blocking objects. Um, so. That's cool. So we just got our first light set up in our world. Um, however, now we want it to, let's say, follow our player. That's easy enough to do, surprisingly. Uh, there's literally a method called attach to body that we can use. Um, we just do that. We're going to attach it to our player body reference. And once we do that, uh, the light will not be affected by the player because they are overlapping, I believe. Um, that's the reason, and we haven't changed the offset, but if uh, you just are attaching it to the player, you want it to be on the center of the player, and then that's all you have to do. But I believe there's another overloaded method with an offset X and an offset Y. So now when I move, uh, the light actually follows with me, and if you'll notice here, there's uh, some good light blocking by those walls that we created, and you can kind of see how the light is really nice looking, pretty soft, ambient light is casting enough shadows to make our light uh, actually show up. So that's perfect. And um, like I said, if you want to set an offset, this is in meters again. So um, we'll do three meters to the right and three meters down. I wonder if that will really affect anything uh, it, it shouldn't do much. I think the light will act on the player, though, because uh, that might have been too far to really see any effect there. So let's change it to, like, 2 and 1. So to the right, 2 meters, and up 1 meter. Yeah, so that is the reason. Um, and you'll notice when the light gets overlapped by a body, it just kind of doesn't affect that body anymore, and I believe that's an efficiency thing, um, just for contained lights. So now you kind of get this light that's following you around, and you can move those in different ways. You can mess around with how they are swinging around or something, various different ways to set up your lights. And with that, uh, that's essentially all I'm going to go into today, just to kind of demonstrate how to work with your first light and getting it in there and set up. And uh, actually, you know what? I, I think I'm going to show you what happens when you have a very, very low ray casting uh, selected. So I'll actually remove the offset and then we'll go and run that real quick. So now I've set it so there's only five. And I believe it only, I should have just set it to four because um, I think it only uses even numbers. Uh, so you'll notice that it's in a diamond shape now. And so you can kind of see where I was talking about how I should have set it to four. So one, two, three, four. And that's what the rays are. And that's what ray casting is all about. The rays are being projected. So the rays will be shot out to such a length that is defined um, here, so six meters. And if they hit an object, you see how they kind of scale back like that. Um, so and the interesting thing about having less rays is that you'll notice once I go above this body here, it just bleeds through. It's because there is no ray that is hitting it. There's no rays projecting that way that are telling this center point of light that it should stop going in that direction. And so it's still producing that light in that way. Um, and that's not really a good looking effect sometimes. So 
always good to have a few rays at the least um, around, like I said, around 20 to 200. And if I increase that to 20, you'll kind of see a, a moderate difference in the way the light looks and reacts to these objects. But you'll notice, see, see how it's a little bit snappier. Um, that's because we have a very low amount of uh, rays going on. So with that, uh, like, comment, subscribe as usual. If you have any questions, of course, post them. And uh, thank you for watching.